But what are the other issues that could have affected it? One of the issues that have come out is that this question mark over fraud. What are the other issues that could have created this massive swing that we've seen uh, in the last four years? Well, uh, there are a few things I'd like to point out. Uh, and uh, one is going back to what Mr. Ansari said, and then I'll get to the point that you made, if, if it's okay. Um, I'd like to s s point out my personal opinion that you cannot compare the first round of the 2005 elections to, the f to this election. Because in this election, you had a sitting president. In that election, you didn't. Mr. Hashimi Rafsanjani was, of course, the most famous person uh, who was uh, seeking presidency at that time. But for whatever reason, he wasn't highly popular at that time. Now, there are reasons for that, right or wrong. We don't even want to go there uh, during this debate. But there is no real comparison between the two. And interestingly, in the second round of that election, President Ahmadinejad's results were almost identical to this to this round. In fact, I think you should compare the, this round of elections to the second round of President Khatami, who was a sitting president, and he won uh, the election hands down, because all those who were oppo opposing him, like Mr. Dr. Tavakoli and others, they didn't have uh, the they weren't known as well. They hadn't traveled as he did. Mr. Ahmadinejad, for the last four years, and this here, I'm sort of getting to what the point that you're making, has been traveling about the country and funding projects throughout the provinces. I mean, this is unprecedented in our country. Now, whether this way of managing the economy and the government is right or wrong, that's, for, you know, that's another issue. I don't want to go down there, that line. But the reality is that this, this person has gone to every province on numerous occasions, to every single city in this country, and people know him, and he's, in, he's funded projects, he's developed uh, the infrastructure in these regions, and that's why one reason why in the provinces there hasn't been the sort of uh, trouble that we've had in Tehran. There have been some instances in some major cities, but not serious, and that is basically because Mr. Ahmadinejad did very well there, and people know that. Another point that I'd like to make is that with regard to the issue that Mr. Ansari pointed out, Dr. Ansari pointed out, is that uh, since Dr. Ansari has, doesn't live in Iran, and it's not a fault of his, uh, I think he doesn't understand Iranian society as some of my colleagues who actually have lived here for the last 30 years. Iranians, by and large, are not reformists or principalists. There is a certain political elite or certain groups of young people who identify themselves with one person or one idea or another. But for the most part, people in Iran have switched uh, their voting patterns very regularly over the past 30 years. And at the moment, Mr. Ahmadinejad has proved himself to be quite popular. Now, uh, another, the, the final point that I want to make is that um, he's, uh, Mr. Ansari spoke about the turnout being higher in some, in some places than the number of registered voters. Again, that's a problem because we don't have registered voters in Iran. Anyone who has a proper ID card is allowed to vote anywhere in the country. And, certain, and since it's a weekend, on weekends, many people travel from one town to another, from Tehran to the outskirts, such as my own family, such as my father-in-law and so on. People go to the north. So someone may live in Tehran, but he may vote in the north. He may vote in a village or in, in other places as well. The fact is that the electoral process in Iran is, is highly developed. It's computerized. There's a computer database. Everyone's uh, identity is there on that database. Yeah. And there are 40 million votes, and their fingerprints are on the subs of the ballot. So any, if they want to check and see if there's any fraud, it can be done. Let me stop you there and uh, go back to Dr. Ansari. A, a couple of <coughs> points uh, picked up there. One was of, of this uh, switching voting pattern. Your thoughts on that? And, of course, voter irregularity, one of the three main points made in that report, uh, and uh, what do you uh, think of uh, Dr. Morandi's assessment there? I think Dr. Morandi's assessment is very fair. I mean, I don't think there's any problem with it, particularly. It's a matter of interpretation. I would disagree with him, of course, on, on, on particularities and whether I understand Iranian society or not. I would, however, take this opportunity, and I hope you'll include it in, to reject wholeheartedly the comments by Carvet 
and this insinuation that I'm somehow a paid employee of the British government. I mean, what a load of rubbish. OK, let's say, uh, at this point, can this I just say... Simply, to, well, no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm not, no, I'm not having this. You asked me to come on this programme. I've come on in good faith. Go and ahead. I don't expect to be abused on it. Yeah? Yeah, I was just right. going to say that we want now, to stick to... All we've the, done is... Go ahead. No, no, but you've given them enough time. And they've issued... Yes. Go so, ahead. All I'm saying is that this report is a preliminary report which has been welcomed by many of the other statisticians which Mr. Afrasiabi has commented on. They are doing their own studies. There will be a longer report done which will put this into context. I think there are a number of anomalies about the way in which this election was conducted. I don't think we can start from the assumption that elections in Iran are free and fair. I think this is a nonsense. But if people want to believe that, that's up to them. The charges of fraud were made by the defeated candidates. And they're sticking by their position. The Council itself has said that 50 cities uh, registered more than 100% turnout and possibly 3 million votes were missing. Now, you know, you can, you can ask the question and say, yes, this is a, a, a very free and fair and sophisticated vote. I would dispute it. That's all I would do. I'm not proving anything one way or the other. The key but question is, an Dr. Ansari... We should have an academic debate. Yeah, we will have... Uh, the, the key question is, though... Uh, with those disputes that, are, that, that you are saying, we're not saying that the mm. Guardian Council has said there was no irregularities. We're saying, despite mm. those disputes, the outcome would not have changed, despite those statistical uh, disputes that you're talking well, about. Well, it depends what you think the result was. Okay, I well, mean, if you think he won by 11 million votes, then fine. And if people really believe it, and I'm quite welcome for your other two participants to argue this, that's up to them. Let's cross over to Dr. But I Afrasabi. Think there have been irregularities. Yeah, let's cross over to Dr. Afrasabi on this point. And, and I think uh, Dr. Yes, Ansari picked up, picked up on a key point there. This uh, whole issue has become onto what people believe without there uh, being uh, the facts produced. Uh, we're, we're seeing the facts. We've got a, a report from Terra Free Tomorrow with the New American Foundation. We've got Dr. Ansari's report. We have the reports that you mentioned, and these are all contradictory. So there are no grassroots facts that uh, everybody is agreeing on. Dr. Ansiabi, Afro well, Ansiabi. I don't appreciate personal insult by Dr. Ansari simply because I, you know, I question his methodology and his attempt to make a poor substitute for hard evidence of fraud <laughs> in his questionable, uh, questionable study. So, you know, let's be tolerant and, and you know, listen to what I have to say and don't interrupt me. Okay, I'm speaking, sir. Don't interrupt me. Now, for when, let me point out one anomaly in his, his report. He makes unsubstantiated generalization about ethnic voting. And he says that in all past presidential elections voted in the Azari region have voted for the Azari candidates. That's not true because Mr. Mir Alizad in the 2005 elections received only 28% of the Azari votes. That's one anomaly. Okay, so there's a lot of these in his report that you can drive a truck through. And unfortunately, Mr. Uh, Ansari's report has been embraced by the Western media as the definitive statement on a fraud. And, and you know, his whole claim that this is preliminary simply doesn't wash. How come the Western media hasn't paid an iota of attention to Professor Medain's analysis Whereas he is a world authority on voter fraud. He has a lifetime of a statistical analysis of voter forensics. Why? Because the Western media wants to believe what it wants to believe yeah. by making Dr. Ansari's report the kind of, you know, veritable proof of voter fraud. And that's why I think this is disingenuous on Dr. Ansari's part to take the upper Dr. hand Afra and Shabi. think that I'm insulting him. I'm not. Dr. Afra Shabi, uh, Dr. Ali Ansari has uh, left us now. Uh, we did invite him on because we wanted course, all yes. points of view, uh, but he's not with us. So that's unfortunate. Uh, he, he didn't want to stay uh, and answer the questions. Uh, but uh, we will continue with the debate objectively. And let's look at his report and some of uh, the points that he's picked out. You are saying about that those regional issues. Uh, let's cross over to Dr. Morandi. That is an issue, isn't it, to say that historically, Azaris vote for Azari participants, and that has been a historical uh, fact. Why didn't it happen this time? Is that not a question to be answered? Well, again, I think it's far more sophisticated than that.